welcome everyone to another broadcast of the Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. All past shows are available in podcast form. Pick them up at artistfirst.com. We welcome your questions and comments. Hit us up by email to dj at artistfirst.com. Here they are, Michael and Margaret Lines. <laughs> Thank you very much, C-Man, and that was certainly not painful at all. I hope not. <laughs> anyway, that was awesome introduction. Hey, but tonight's show, tonight, 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 we are going to go back to one of our favorite topics. Oh, dear. Can you guys guess what it might be? <laughs> no, we're, uh, tonight we're going to talk um, really, literally about a um, uh, about a, a really a genius of a poet. Uh, his name is Khalil Gibran, and if you are not at all familiar with him, he um, uh, he wrote a lot of of poetry in the latter part of the 19th century into the early part of the 20th century. He died rather young, actually. And um, he's a, a, a born in Lebanon, so he's an international um, poet. But he's lived a long time, lived a lot of his life in New York, in in, uh, in New York City, in the U.S. And um, we did another show on one of his poems, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was it was a beautiful, beautiful show. So we thought tonight was the night we would we would go back to our perennial favorite topic. And and mix in Mr. Gibran. So we're going to talk tonight about pain. <laughs> but 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 in this sense, um, this is really, in my opinion, anyway, he, the, uh, in this particular poem, which is entitled "On Pain," he's really talking about a couple of different things. And, and we'll read the poem in a moment. Margaret's going to read the poem in a moment. And then we'll kind of, of, of talk about our impressions of it. But I think he's talking more about growth necessarily than he is about um, just, let's say, a physical uh, pain. Uh, but anyway, did you want to read the poem? Uh, okay, I can do that. Uh, on pain. Khalil Gibran. Your pain is the breaking of the shell that encloses your understanding, even as the stone of the fruit must break, that its heart may stand in the sun. So must you know pain. And could you keep your heart in wonder at the daily miracles of your life Your pain would not seem less wondrous than your joy. And you would accept the seasons of your heart, even as you have always accepted the seasons that pass over your fields. And you would watch with serenity through the winters of your grief. Much of your pain is self-chosen. It is the bitter potion by which the physician within you heals your sick self. Therefore, trust the physician and drink his remedy in silence and tranquility. For his hand, though heavy and hard, is guided by the tender hand of the unseen. And the cup he brings, though it burn your lips, has been fashioned of the clay which the potter has moistened with his own sacred tears. Really beautiful. Every time... um... I've heard it recited or listened to it, and there's a it, it is a very good recitation of this on YouTube if you want to hear it. But every time I hear it, it it it, it evokes uh, some of the same feelings, but yet something even deeper. It's something which it reveals if you listen to it carefully. It reveals you know um, portions of your own heart that you have not perhaps examined recently, or or uh, it brings up in your mind um, 
events and images from your own life. But um, uh, Khalil Gibran, like all good poets, uses language to pierce the veils uh, which lie between us and, and our true feelings, our true, um, our true heartfelt emotions that we don't necessarily know how to express ourselves. These are, these are words which resonate. And I think everyone um, can appreciate the, the depths of pain, which they don't express, they aren't able to express, that he's talking about here. Um, one, of the, one of the best lines, and forgive me if I misquote it, but this, one of the best lines to my mind is, is the, uh, the fact that your, your pain <clears throat> is no more than the breaking of the shell of the fruit, the stone of the fruit, so that its heart may stand in the sun. And that line to me, Margaret, is so beautiful and so evocative because that's the, you know, the, the seed uh, which dies and from which comes the plant, the flower, and the fruit. Um, the beautiful analogy to you know, uh, Christ going into the tomb and emerging and becoming our Savior. Um, and many other uh, you know, ways of thinking of, of passing through a change, you know, um, we are, all of us, subject to breaking. But without breaking, what, what he's really saying here is there's no, there's no growth, there's no opportunity to, uh, to come to joy. And I love the way he juxtaposes joy and pain as seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, se- well, it's understanding that down in this world, mm-hmm. it's process it's if you're planting the seed it takes time for it to come to fullness to grow into a plant and then eventually bear fruit but the phrase your pain is the breaking of the shell Mm. that encloses your understanding if you equate that to your heart, in essence, it is the analogy of your heart must break mm-hmm. before you can truly understand. And that truth is exceedingly uncomfortable for most people. Mm-hmm. You go back to the argument of, well, why do we have to learn without uh with with we should be able to learn without having uh so too much pain in our lives right but um, that but this phrase brings it right to home because you, if you understand that your heart is enclosed and it doesn't reach out it's understanding, you begin to understand what it is that encloses your heart. Because that feeling is something you really would rather not feel. Hmm. And you protect yourself from that kind of pain. You pull away from it. You reason it out. Hmm so that you have handles on what you think is painful. Anything you can do so that your heart may not feel this. And the only way you can feel this is if your heart is broken. And I think it's it's unavoidable, yet we struggle against it. Um, And even the poet here, or uh, in the voice of the poem... He says in the next line, you know, and I love this, and could you keep your heart in wonder at the daily miracles of your life? Which is basically if you could be in a state of grace just for your existence, you know, whatever the whatever the current condition, your life is the precious thing. The existence is the precious thing. If you, but if you could keep your heart there, you wouldn't have this fear. You know, this fear of pain or of breaking, because you'd see it, 
as he says, as a season. Yes, now I, it is, I'm being broken. I will learn, I will heal, and I will grow. But we don't see it that way. We see it as something which is abnormal. Mm-hmm. It is the acceptance of the cycles that exist down here. You cannot live on this earth without experiencing cycles. And to accept the fact that this is the flow of life down here. Now, why do we why do we resist that? Indeed, why do we? Right. Well, it, it it goes back to the very first line in the poem. You don't want to feel the change. You just get comfortable in the way things have been running and the way you're predicting it to run and basically saying, well, I don't have to feel that. I'll, I can figure that out. As long as I can figure it out, I'll learn something. Well, you're right, but when I'm, I'm trying to get to, the, to what's, what's below that. Why? Uh, we've talked about this on the other shows of The Soul of the Everyman. You know, it's this idea that um, pain or change or anything bad is for other people. Oh, other people go through that, you know. It's not for me. And, and the, the, the sentiment, the, the, the thing that I think is behind it is, I'm, I'm, I'm already, I'm already, I'm already, I'm, I'm already, just fine. I'm just fine. I'm already, I'm going to say the word, the P word. I'm already perfect, you see. <laughs> so I don't need any more pain. I've got it. I've got it down. <laughs> After I've analyzed myself and I've been through so many things and I've, understood all the experiences that I've had and I've I've categorized it and I've turned it around. Right. I I know what what this is and I know who I am so I know me completely so I'm perfect. I love the three I knows that you put there because that's what you hear. Mm-hmm. When when you when you're arguing with with God, with reality, with the with 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 that which is, what you argue with is the I know, and therefore other people they don't know they need to go through this, but I I know. <laughs> yep. And that the other the one line in the poem where he talks of. The physician that is within you. Oh, yeah. Second paragraph, yeah. Mm-hmm. Understanding the physician that is within you. And the physician is, this physician is what heals your sick self. <laughs> I think he laughed when he wrote that line. But I, I want to go back. What is the physician that is within us? Because interestingly enough, I'll just put this to you, but I, I know that he separates the physician from, let's say, the creator or 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 that which is greater. You know, he t- I think he calls it uh, the unseen, which is a nice way, just spirit. But it isn't the, the physician is not God coming in there and monkeying with you. What is it? Do you think? There's an internal aspect to yourself that knows what you need. And if you go back, I'm going to borrow some phrases from uh, other ways of thinking, cultural ways of thinking, okay? Um, we have the concept of soul. We have the concept of oversoul mm. and karma. Mm. And the idea is that the oversoul uh, understands that there are parts of it that need to learn So it sends pieces of itself with uh, a lesson that needs to be looked at. Hmm. And sometimes the lessons are very hard because that part of the soul is very hard. (laughs) And it has to be softened. So... Frankly, the physician that is within you is actually you. But it's the part of you that has a much greater awareness. And it 
you or your awareness down here is an aspect of that greater awareness. And if you accept that, you'll understand that it's actually you doing it to you. Hmm. And interesting, and I love the fact that he says it's guided by the unseen. So there's a connection back through the greater you to spirit, as as we as we know from many other ways and many other ways of looking at it. But but the 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 part that you just said, which I think is if, is is very evocative, is that you are your own healer. Mm-hmm. You and I'm talking about the greater, vaster you. You know what you need to know. But your ego, the I, the I know, (laughs) Mm -hmm. not the you know, but the I know, wants to avoid it. What I I am interested to come to, and we probably can't get there, is why? Why does the I want to do that? It it, it resists. It It is an impediment to the lesson. And, and it, it is it, it takes it personally. It, it's offended that that pain crosses its path. And, and you said that it's predictable. I know what I, I know what I want to do, and I know where I'm going, and I've got it all together. And I'm not those people that need those things. I am p- 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 perfect. <laughs> mm-hmm. The I really gets off on being, you know. Yes, it does. And it feels again. I can figure out me, <laughs> all right, and, and I'm going to learn in small little little snippets. Right. I've got this, okay. I I can do this at my I, own pace. Yes, yes. <laughs> and you, not you, not if I don't feel like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I'm laughing. But that part of you is responding to the fact that. As we said in the very beginning of the poem, your heart must break for you to understand. And the ego part of you says, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with you. The first line is so important because <clears throat> here he really says, this is what he's saying, is your pain is a consequence of breaking. So the breaking happens. The pain is your indication that it's happening. And before that, your understand or your ability to understand, your ability to, to learn what you needed to learn was enclosed and, 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 and I would say blocked. If if that shell is left in place with the I knows constantly building it bigger and bigger and bigger, you never get to the understanding. You don't get to the kernel of who you are. Mm. You're here to go through the cycles and that necessitates level changes. <laughs> and we all say, Oh yes, I want a level change. Yes, I wanna I wanna I wanna go to the next level. Yeah. Yes, you know, and everybody as far as I I see is looking for that level up, whether it is you, the guys that want ascension, the guys that want enlightenment, the guys that feel that you know there's a higher consciousness coming in, the guys that are following God through religious venues, whichever way there are a myriad of religious venues. But they all want to level up core of the truth is, are they willing to have their heart break? And they're in, not. In order to get there. And if they are truthful with themselves, they are not. And they are building up habits that avoid an encounter with yourself. And yet, despite all the machinations of the ego and all these I knows, the, the beauty and, and the danger and the, and the um, 
amazing part of living in this incarnation, whatever part of you is here, is it doesn't matter. Because reality doesn't ask permission. It doesn't say, is today a good day for your heart to be broken? It just comes, as, as he says later in this poem, as the seasons pass over your fields, no one holds back winter. No one, no one is able to. When you, people would even laugh. Say, what do you mean hold back winter? It just comes. Well, we want to pretend that we can build our, let's say, our wall of sand where the, where the waves can't come crashing through it. We can build our, or whatever it is, so that winter can't come to us. So that our heart won't be broken. Because we're not ready, not today, tomorrow, next day, maybe next month I'll pencil you in. None of that matters because the, no one, uh, the reality doesn't ask permission. It just comes, like winter comes, like, like dawn comes. And it's there. And then, first of all, I think part of the very first part of the pain is the shattering of the illusions. All the I knows break. Mm. And if you've built up a, more and more I knows you broke, the harder and more painful it is. All your, all your ego invested I knows and how wonderful I am and my perfection and my, 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 my face, yeah. I, face I put out to everyone, it all cracks. And that's a big part of the pain is, is the breaking of illusion. Mm-hmm. Especially if the illusion is just uh, the face that you present, yeah. and your your heart, which is the reason why you came down here, people. Okay, mm. uh, whether you you want to admit it or not. The pain that you feel is when you've reached the very limit of what you think you are. The minute you go past your boundaries, your limitations of anything that you think you are or how you did or how you, you appear to other people and how your life has been run, the minute you're outside of that, it's painful. Mm -hmm. And it's the immediate, I don't want to. I don't want to grow. And you're like, it's not what happens down here. The minute you don't grow, if a seed doesn't grow, uh, that's the end of it. Stagnates. Could I go back one little bit? Sure. Because I, I think he, the interesting thing about Gibran's poem here is that he, he mentions this. The first line of the second paragraph is, much of your pain is self-chosen. Right. And that's what that is, is all this illusion and faces and everything. You're choosing all that. And, and, and when it's broken, the, the, the grief that you spend upon the l grieving the loss of illusion it brings you so much more pain. If, as he says, we could accept with, uh, with tranquility, I think he used a different word, but with tranquility, the seasons, oh, it's, just, it's my turn to be in pain. Because why? Because there's no why. Because there is no why. It just is. If we accepted that, the pain is maybe still there, of course, because you're going through something, but it doesn't have all those illusory knives. Oh, because I thought I was this, and I thought I was that, and I told them this, and I, all the I-ego constructs which become crashing down add, in fact, are largely um, amplify the pain because you're, you're in trying to inflate them and spending precious energy, which you could be just using to, to, to heal and to grow, on, oh, uh, oh, picking up this and shoving up that, and oh no, I'm, I, I'm not this and I'm not that anymore. All those things. Yeah, the um, construct yeah. that you form 
of yourself, who you think you are, <laughs> shatters because what you this construct of who you think you are is brittle. It is like the glass of a mirror, oh, two-dimensional. Two so, so good. And once that shatters, you are left with looking at the broken pieces. But the funny part about it is if you actually look in the pieces of a shattered mirror, you see thousands of fragments and images of you. Mm. Understanding that you haven't changed. You're still there. It's just that now, instead of one image, it's been multiplied. Mm. Are you willing to embrace that? Or is the only thing that's going to allow you peace is if all those fragments are together in one flat plane and you're just looking at this one image of you. Suddenly now a shattered image implies to your mental faculty your soul saying to it, There's thousands of fragments of you that you have not even embraced. Mm. I think that's one of the fears. Huge fear. Uh, but I, I go back a little. I love the fact when the mirror, uh, let's use that analogy, when the mirror shatters, the ego mirror, which is the, the eye looking at the eye and talking about himself, itself, uh, when it shatters, um, the ego's first impulse is to put it all back together again and pretend it didn't happen. Isn't that the very first thing the ego wants is to deny the change? Mm -hmm. Almost to pretend that if I, if, I, if I pretend it didn't happen, then it didn't happen. And, and you're trying to, to ignore the shattering and somehow and spend tremendous amounts of energy in that denial Pace. You know, the grief, they talk about the seven stages of grief, but I'm not going to go there. But, it's, it, but there is this, this instant aspect of the ego, which, which from, its, from this pain, which is also self-imposed, it wants to, the way to alleviate the pain is to put the mirror back together. It thinks. It thinks. It thinks. It thinks. See, that's, that's the funny part. Instead of sitting there and realizing that the shattering is actually a way to open up yourself it wants to put it all back the way it was I think the ego sees that as its own death because it doesn't recognize it um, and maybe that's the key yeah. that's the key if the ego can embrace the fact that its image wasn't destroyed it was actually multiplied I think that would change many things. That's a good way of thinking about it. Um, you know what? Let's let's t take a moment, take a breath. We've been doing some pretty heavy lifting here. Everyone, just chill out for a second. Don't worry about the change. We're going to go back to the studio. We'll have a little couple commercials, and we'll come back on the other side and talk about pain. The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed is the latest book from Michael Lines, the award-winning author of There is a Reaper. Featuring 13 original stories, this wide-ranging collection has everything. Forbidden love, gods versus demigods, weird invading aliens, sexy seductive artificial intelligence, and unusual passion between the living and the dead. All set amidst fantastic worlds of pain and loss and boundless joy. From the sublime to the macabre to the bittersweet, the fat man gets out of bed will leave you breathless with laughter, brimming with tears, trembling with suspense. Available now on Amazon.com, Google Play, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. The wait is over. First Blood, book two of the Blood series is out. Your favorite bad boy thief, Dev, is back. 
and the beautiful and deadly Trey is right there with him. She is sharp, sexy, and full of surprises. Their adventures continue as a new power arises to threaten the world. The heart of creation is under attack and time is definitely not on their side as they battle against their enemies undead hordes. Can they unlock the hidden power that can defeat him or will his forces draw first blood? Get all three installments in the series. Book Zero, It's in the Blood. Book One, Destroyer's Blood and the new release, Book Two, First Blood Today. Available in ebook and paperback format on Amazon, Kobo, Apple, and most other fine e tailers. Rick Rodan fans, love mythology with plenty of action and humor? Destroyer's Blood is for you. The new fantasy novel by award winning author Michael Lines is book one of the adventures of Dev Kalian, the Blood series. Follow Dev and his magic sword betrayer as they are suddenly attacked and forced to return to Olympus to fight in a war they want no part in. The world of men and gods is about to be destroyed by Zeus's ancient foe and only Dev and Trey can stop him. The conflict never stops and the amazing twist will have you on the edge of your seat. Act now while the ebook is on sale for only 99 cents. Destroyer's Blood is available on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. And while you're there, get the free prequel, It's in the Blood, available for a limited time. There is a Reaper is the story of five-year-old Christopher Aaron and his life-changing struggle with leukemia. Winner of both the Indie Bragg Medallion as well as the reader's favorite silver medal for memoir, there is a Reaper has more than 100 Amazon book reviews and a five-star rating. It has been described as life-changing, spiritual, a must-read. Just released on Audible and iTunes, this memoir is also available in paperback and on Amazon Kindle for only 99 cents. Get your copy of this life-changing memoir today. Hi, this is Hannah Ruth from the band Wild Hum. Check out our new Americana Soul CD, Wild Hum, at our website, w-i-l-d-h-u-m music.com. And you are listening to the Artist First Radio Network. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on the Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. Back to your hosts, Michael and Margaret Lines. And we return to pain. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, uh, uh, tonight we are talking about, um, about pain, but, but interestingly enough, what we're t- really uh, using as a vehicle is um, this wonderful poem by Khalil Gibran, and, and I would recommend that you, you listen to it, but, um, you know, I, I think the last point that we were talking about, which was the, the fact that much of our pain, when we're talking about pain that comes from life and the growth stages of life, much of our pain is here's a good way of thinking about it. We build up these wonderful ego shells with the, with the um, illusion that they are invulnerable and that they will only, that we can control when we want to do something and when we're going to learn and when we're not. And today, tonight is not a good night because it's bowling night and whatever. All that illusory energy that we put into these things. And, and there they are. They're this beautiful ego constructs. And then life happens. And life doesn't care about that. Life picks you out of a hat, puts you up on a pedestal, says, you are going to go through this. No ifs, ands, buts, can't get out of it, no way to bargain for it, none of, you know, all the stages, none of that. And so all that comes, and we even say this in the language, it all comes crashing down. And in the crashing, we are crushed. Our ego is crushed. It's shattered. And all that pain comes from that. And... Um, we, we know it's true, yet we build these ego shells anyway. And your last point, Margaret, which, which we can probably can pick up now and continue with, is that the, the, um, if the ego could understand that or, or internalize 
that this shattering is an amplification, that it's, a, it's an opportunity. It's a season of change, not a season of death. Because I think the ego thinks when, uh, feels that when these things shatter, that it's being destroyed. And it's afraid because it doesn't want to die or doesn't want to be destroyed. Well, if, if you as a being identify yourself as ego only mm. then it is that identification in a whole mirror of the image that you're seeing in front of you and all the primping and uh, clothing and, and whatever else you may use to make that image more agreeable to you that is the concept of, of an ego but when it shatters it is suddenly now you are allowed to see into a different dimension of you mm. but if you've invested everything in that one image and this has got to be the only image I see for me to be happy then yes you will have a problem because you believe that that image and that image alone, that perfection that you see coming at you in the mirror is the only thing that you want. That's got to be there. That means I'm okay. When I see that, I'm okay. okay. But it's in that shattering, and life will shatter you, it is what happens down here because you are more than just a two-dimensional image so when that image suddenly shatters that panic that sets in the that no scream that you can hear because suddenly it's not perfection and what does it do immediately internally it's like I'm not perfect I'm, there's something wrong with me. Right. This is all bad. Right. And understanding that you, you are the one that is putting the label bad on it. Right. Can you take that label away? Because that is a judgment that you yourself have received. Hmm. You know, the thought may cross your mind, and you agreed with it. Right. Like, okay, take stock. Look at it and say, okay, I'm taking the label away now. What am I left with? Right. And it's always what you're left with that allows the growth to happen. Because in that shattering, something else may express itself. You're not allowing anything except that surface image to be expressed nothing underneath it is allowed to bubble up hmm. this is already perfect but go back a little bit i mean this the wonderful thing about what you're just saying is that there's always the 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 actual you is hmm. what perceives um this shattering if you, it, 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 just to put a fine point on it, if you were just the ego, mm -hmm. and your and your existence was crushed, you wouldn't have anything to perceive the crushing with. You you wouldn't be able to experience the pain if you weren't already separate from the ego. It was it is the illusion that of of the destruction of yourself of the, as you said, um, the the ego's concept of who it was the thought of the construct of who you are from, shatters right and and so the 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 embracing of a season of change gives you two wonderful things if you sit there and go okay i'm broken and 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 from that i learned that i am at the same as all others on this earth and in this existence we may all be broken. The ego has spent all that time saying, I'm not them, I'm perfect. Bush, you realize, I am them. 
they are me. We are all broken. We will all be broken. We will all be healed. We will all learn. So that that first veil, huge number of veils, but that first veil is taken away. And the, and the second one is, I'm the existence, the being that is me, the true being that is me, is still here, in pain right now, in a season of winter right now, but none of the constructs were me. And, and, and that's, the, I think, the first bit of wreckage that you can grab onto. It wasn't me. None of this wreckage was me. I'm still grabbing on. I'm still being tossed in this storm. I'm still experiencing the winter. But all that, all the stuff that was blown down, all the grief of the loss, I, I let it go. And, and suddenly the pain will lessen. You, you'll realize that the self-inflicted pain is a large part of the whole pain. And as he says here, and as we learned through our experiences, you realize that in going forward, taking that first step, the pain grows less. You leave behind the shards. And you take the step and you say, yeah, this is my new reality. I don't know where we're going. I don't care. All the things I thought I was, no. Broom all that. It hurts. Take the first step forward, and it, it's less... The pain is less because you've begun, as the seed does when the shell is broken, you begin to sprout. You taking stock. You think of it, think of it that way. The seed itself has lost the hull. Hmm. It's uh, fallen away, and it's very tender in the depths of the earth, hmm. in that darkness. And the first thing it does is it grows, it grows roots, and then it grows up as the process is. It's below and above simultaneously until it breaks through to the sun and receives more energy to continue that growth. Mm. And meanwhile, the hole that has fallen away is broken down so that the roots themselves can take nourishment from what it contains. Exactly. And not waste that energy. Mm -hmm. It's accepting the fact that your form will change. That is the way of things down here. You cannot look at one thing and say, this will stand forever. Like, there is no forever that way down here. Right. But to want to believe that it is, I believe, it's almost like a self-soothing mechanism, just like a baby sucks its thumb. Yes. Now I'm going to, I'm going to suck on this. No, no, I'm fine. Right. My hair's not going to fall out. I'm not going to get fat. I'm not going to get any wrinkles. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm fat and wrinkly. My hair fell out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep sucking. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. But, but, but that's, I mean, that's, you know, those things, those cosmetic things, if people don't have gigantic uh, life-changing events, which happens to many, but even just that is enough that you see the illusory um, trying to maintain the illusion of, of a unchanging youth and how that uh, catches up with you. And that can become, if you've spent 40 years trying to maintain that mirror, and all of a sudden, everything sags and, and falls out and, and, and stops working and kind of gets creaky. And, and that can be an, a life-changing moment. It can be the first one. It's like, I, oh, I am old. You know, the, what is it? The midlife crisis. They go, I'm not whatever number of years old. My life is over. You know, it's this great drama. But, but that illusion was holding you back. It's understanding that when you are shattered, mm. just like with the mirror, when you are shattered and in great pain from that shattering, the only way to go is through. Yeah. When it comes to pain, you just, you must take the step forward Embrace that pain. The change has happened. And you must go through the breaks into something completely 
different, completely new. Mm. To realize that the newness is a step away. And it's not anything that I thought of Mm. before. Nor can you go back to it. There are no backseas. Okay. Isn't that a wonderful... Let's see there... When you grow, you don't fit back into the shell. Um, it, there's a, been a number of we've, we've not watched uh, a number of people who gave talks on this type of subject. When you leave your uh, your shell, your your initial small space, um, and you grow, you you look back and you go, uh, I can't fit back into that. Even if I wanted to, I could never go back. There's no backsies, and. Just because you grew, uh, you, you, you went from a seed and you grew and you became something new, there's also no guarantee that there you are, you're done again, you're perfection yet again, here you are, you don't have to do it anymore. It's a, it, the, the true wisdom comes in saying that I will never, or, or maybe you learn this lesson, that you no longer build the ego constructs. You, you remain open. And you'll notice, as he says in the, in the poem, and if we keep your heart in wonder, if you keep your heart in a place where the seasons and changes of life are, are no more, it's no more um, strange to become joy, to get joyful, spring and summer, to get a, a pain, winter or fall. These seasons just come and they go. And, and, and you, the being which is you, has acquired the wisdom to say, where I am right now is not where I want where I want to be tomorrow. I may be, but there's no more want to be. There's no more ego put into it. I am this, and I'll never change. And I don't want to change and keep building up the walls. And you won't have these. You won't you, you won't be able to be shattered. You'll be able to be changed, but you're, you've softened that shell to where it's almost not there. You you, you accept those seasons coming in that's that's really the goal is is don't don't build the walls in the first place and you won't have the tremendous shattering that you that you get when you when no matter what it comes you know well it is growth that we are experiencing down here mm. and to understand that growth means change yeah. and people say oh yes I'll accept change but they they want the good change right <laughs> that, you know there's a good change and then there's a bad change right and you're sitting there going it's just change right can you stop judging there you go what's going on this is what I meant by you're looking at it and that shattered mirror is bad 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 it's like no this is part of uh, the exercises that they do uh, in Buddhism. Mm. You are not supposed to engage in outcomes. Mm-hmm. Understand that outcomes happen, and not and sitting there and just uh, wanting to say this is this is all good or this is all bad continually making judgments and and I, the thing I want to bring forward is, is the fact that in the western world you're constantly being asked whether you like it or not hmm. which basically reinforces you uh, judging what's happening to you there's something there though if you would, don't mind uh, I think people conflate these two things they say well what do you mean I can't like something? And the answer is, of course you can. You can enjoy every moment of your life. But what Margaret is talking about particularly is people say, I don't like that, therefore it's bad and I don't want it. And, and they, that's the wall. It's the I don't want. Mm-hmm. It's not that when, when, when life happens to you and every moment of it can be joyous or every moment of it can be experienced, you can like or dislike every moment, but don't hold on to it. Don't say... This moment I don't like, therefore I reject, and it's not me, and that's for other people, and I'm just... All that judgment is a hardening. It's not a liking or disliking an experience. It's literally saying, 
this experience, I'm going to reject that reality and try to substitute my own. And that's where you build up the wall, the energy that then will really hurt you when it, it's going to be shattered. You are a limitless being. Mm. And how many times have we heard people say, I, I want that. I want to live in that kind of uh, no boundaries world. Well, that means that you have to give up your pain. Because that's the ultimate change. And that's interesting because people don't want to equate, well, if I'm limitless, that means there's, you know, I'm just, just limitless. I'm powerful. I'm just, <laughs> and it's like, but it's a grand change. And that usually means it's a grand pain. Right. And, and also you have to give up the illusion of control. And, and, and again, people say, well, if you're not in control, then it's chaos. No, no, no. You, understand. You, you, you know where you're going and you know where you are and, and you can even see where you might end up. But the control illusion is this one, is that um, you decide that this is not the way to go and you resist, you try to, try to control the event and, and again, try to move, you substitute the power. Of, well, I will manifest this thing away from me. Well, it, it, I've just has to try harder, right? Or, or that's you know that um, rejection of reality is psychosis. Okay, it, it becomes toxic the more you do it, and the acceptance of reality isn't that you're willy nilly. It's like I will, I will, I will continue to be a strong moving, being in this moment, knowing it will change and understanding that accepting doesn't mean that I, I have no volition. In fact, every moment you must choose, but every moment you must deal with the actual being reality of where you are, what you are choosing. You're not choosing where you're going. You're not choosing what happens to you. You're choosing how you react to it. I accept this. This is this is this is neither good nor bad, it just is. And I will look for joy and growth in every moment, the most joyous, the most painful. That's the choice and the will. It's the most powerful thing you have to choose how you will react. And people use it to choose what they will reject. I'm going to close my eyes even harder. Harder. <laughs> but that doesn't work. Well, it's again a fear response. Mm -hmm. You must acknowledge the fact that this is what you're afraid of. To know what it is that you're afraid of. Because frankly, there are things out in this world that will manipulate your fears. Uh. In order to make you do what they want you to do. Well, and isn't what you just said so, so beautiful? The... the, the um, the choice of, you know, accepting doesn't mean not choosing. Accepting means choosing to accept. Um, you, you, the power you have to reject and accept things and, 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 you know, just be in the center of all of it is perverted when you say, I judge this to be bad and therefore it's not me and it's only for other people. It's the same power but in one way you're, you're going to set yourself to, up to be hurt. Mm -hmm. Well there, you, at that point you are always going to be hurt. Yeah. Because you've already formed the what is good and what is bad. You know then people want to force you to take sides. That's what I find <laughs> fascinating. Even better yes. You know it's like you want me to take sides? Why? And the only purpose is for conflict. Did, did, did anyone ever think of that? The minute you're forcing a side, you are forcing conflict. Not that you n are not supposed to uh, have an opinion. Everyone it has an opinion, okay? You just have to accept that, people. Everybody has an opinion. A unique one, 
usually. Yes. doesn't have to all be the same. You don't get to decide what's good or bad. But the minute you want to force an issue uh, and someone is, is trying to force that on you, they want to force this issue on you, you are pushing forward conflict and strife. Well, and also setting yourself up for pain because it's yet another another illusion Did, uh, you said it when we when we started this before we got on the show that this we would exhaust this topic and not finish it but I think we did a, a, a fairly good job but uh, I would I would recommend that uh, you listen to Khalil Gibran's poems this one in particular and, and the other one uh, defeat wonderful poems and I think we've reached our defeat and are the end of our of our show so uh, I'm Michael Lyons uh, I think we need another show we're not done with this um, you may be Okay, and I'm Margaret, and thank you for listening. (laughs) 